As always, not quite sure uh, what video number this is gonna end up being, but just a quick one today uh, to let my followers know that I am still working on the Nomad project. Uh, most of the effort's been concentrated on just getting the frame repaired and uh, the welder is coming over in a few minutes to weld on uh, one of the body mounts that had to be taken off uh, for rust repair. So since the last time or whenever, you know, obviously all the shackle hangers are fully welded in, a uh, little hard to see. I made some cosmetic repair pieces. Uh, looks like the Dickens right now, but I'm going to finish grind all those welds and get that ready for body filler. And same on both sides. The level is clamped on there, trying to get uh, figured out exactly where I stand with the tail end of the frame. Uh, we do think that it pulled as a result of the welding. So uh, trying to get a handle on what that differential might be and deal with it maybe before we get too far down the road. Again, today, trying to get this body mount welded back on the frame. Uh, what I decided to do, originally I was going to wait to weld that on until after the body was bolted on the frame and then just locate it that way. But then I figured out that I should be able to replicate that whole pattern with a piece of plywood maybe and drop some three quarter inch bolts in. So uh, using what I had for the frame and also the factory frame drawing on the internet, what I was able to figure out was, or what's given on the factory frame drawing that the spacing from here to here is 33 and a half inches. And then from that bolt to that bolt is 55 and 3 eighths. Originally, I thought that these mounts were in the same line and that's not the case. What I did is I put body bushings back in the existing mounts and since I could fit a uh, three quarter inch OD sleeve in there, I had a couple, but when the plywood wasn't in there, a couple of three quarter inch OD rods in each hole and then I was able to verify that the center to center from this to that is 53 inches. So what I did, I had a piece of this 3 16 plywood, took it and put it on the table saw and cut it perfectly square. And then I did two things. One, I did a set of parallel lines from here to here on the 33 and a half inch dimension. And then I found the center line of the plywood, and then the 53 inch dimension, I divided that by half, drilled two three quarter inch holes so I could put bolts in there. And then I went ahead and took the factory drawing dimension of 55 and 3 eighths, again from the center line, laid it out, and just drilled a small hole, just big enough to put a string and a plumb bob, I'm sorry, pointing the wrong thing, palm bob in there to verify that it was 53 and a half, three eighths inches, 55 and three eighths inches. And so I confirmed that that was right. So I went back and actually what I did, I drilled those holes with a Forstner bit. And in order to make sure that my tip on my Forstner bit didn't wander, I bored a three quarter inch hole and then I clamped this, not this exact piece, clamped it on the board so there was no water. So anyway, the plywood got made. I made these little blocks to space the thing up a little bit. And it got the bracket 
right back where it's supposed to go. So we're gonna weld that on today. So that's it on the frame. Uh, as you can see, the body made it back from the sandblaster. Uh, a few surprises here. Uh, I hadn't really noticed this dent in the cowl before. Didn't notice that somebody had trouble getting to the hinges on this. Cut a slice, did something inside here and then welded them back together. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more information on this car body. I think when I get the welder taken care of but what I found that was interesting is that the roof outside of that little pinhole, the roof on the driver's side is in really good shape, but the doggone drip tray is rotted out on this side. Now, you might recall this side of the body when the glass was taken off had like the India ivory roof paint and then some kind of orange paint that was under here. And then I also had orange paint along here. And I was loudly proclaiming, you know, this was a orange and white car. Uh, then I put the body away. Again, it definitely was orange interior. I uh, can't see so much and I lost some of that paint underneath the firewall that was orange. But in the process of getting the body ready to take to the sandblaster and looking at it some more. What I noticed was that on this side of the body, underneath the glass, it had been black. And then also the drip rail was black, even though that gets covered up with a piece of stainless steel trim. Also underneath like the door hinges, and the latch and back here in the tailgate area underneath tailgate hinges it was black underneath the striker and that little clip it was also black on both sides uh, paint's gone now uh, lost to the sandblaster now there was orange paint underneath this. This is where the hold open is for the lift gate, but that was the only place. So I think that instead of an orange and white exterior, this car maybe originally left the factory as a black car. I ground off some window sealant there and you can see it was black underneath there. Now, it could very well have had an orange and white paint job at some time, but maybe it left the body or left the plant as a black car and then, and then got painted in orange and white. Oh, I wanted to show you, uh, this was a little disappointing, kind of typical nomad problems. I knew I had a soft spot in the roof here. But as you can see, after we went through the sandblaster, I have that down all the way into here. But what's weird is the drip tray is in fantastic shape. So the roof rotted out, but the drip tray didn't and it was just the opposite on the other side. So I'm gonna cut it off here. The welder just showed up. Uh, I'll get this thing posted and there'll be a more detailed video uh, in probably a week or so. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, comment as you want.